The English composer Edward Elgar is best known for his Enigma variations, his pomp and circumstance marches, the first of which generally gets played at the last night of the proms, and various concertos and symphonies. He was also a keen amateur chemist and cryptologist, someone who makes and breaks codes. His most famous work, Enigma Variations, had its origins one evening in October 1898. After a day of violin teaching, Elgar was doodling on the piano at home when his wife Alice said, Play it again, I like that tune. He'd been daydreaming, so he had to try a few different possibilities before Alice exclaimed, That's the tune. What is it? Elgar said it was nothing, just something he'd made up. But because Alice liked it so much, he used the melody as the starting point, the theme, for 14 different variations, each reflecting the character and personality of one of his friends. These became the Enigma Variations, the theme itself being the Enigma. Variation 1, C-A-E, was for his wife, Caroline Alice Elgar. Variation 9, Nimrod, is a majestic adagio and the most famous part of the whole work. Its name refers to Augustus Jaeger, a music editor and close friend of Elgar's. Jaeger is German for hunter, and in the Old Testament, Nimrod is described as being a mighty hunter. Elgar never spells out the original melody that he played to his wife, and from which all the variations are derived. In a program note, he wrote, The enigma I will not explain. Its dark saying must be left unguessed, and I warn you that the connection between the variations and the theme is often of the slightest texture. Further, through and over the whole set, another and larger theme goes, but is not played. It's this last claim of Elgar's that some other melody, possibly even a well-known song, is somehow hidden within the variations that's kept musicologists guessing for more than a century. There have been a few clues as to the nature of the mysterious theme. For instance, in 1905, Robert Buckley stated in his biography of Elgar, written in close cooperation with the composer, the theme is a counterpoint on some well-known melody which is never heard. Among the many suggestions as to what the melody might be is a recent one by the young composer Ed Newton Rex. He thinks the hidden theme is Pegolesi's Stabat Mater, a popular choral piece from the 18th century. Apparently, the Enigma theme fits perfectly over the harmonies of the vocal parts of Stabat Mater and over its characteristic bass line. But it's just one more theory to add to the long list that music lovers have come up with over the years. There's another mystery surrounding a coded message that Elgar sent to a young woman in 1897. The tenth of his Enigma variations is called Dora Bella, Elgar's pet name for Dora Penny. She was the daughter of one of Alice Elgar's friends. In July 1897, the Pennies invited Edward and Alice to stay at their home, Wolverhampton Rectory, for a few days. Elgar was then 40, and still to make a mark on the world as a composer. Dora was in her early 20s. The two struck up a friendship, which was to become lifelong, although there's no evidence to suggest it was ever romantic. On returning home, Alice wrote to the Pennies thanking them for their hospitality, and Edward included a cryptic note on which he penciled the name Miss Penny. It was made up of 87 squiggly characters. 24 distinct ones, spread across three lines. The secret message only came to light 40 years later, when Dora published it in her memoir, Edward Elgar, Memories of a Variation. So what does the message mean? At first glance, it might seem as if each different squiggle stood for a different letter of the alphabet, but no analysis along these lines has come up with a credible solution. There's been speculation that it may have been in some kind of shorthand known only to Elgar and his friend. But Dora claimed in her memoir 
that she herself was in the dark as to its meaning. In 2007, the Elgar Society ran a competition offering a prize of £1,500 to anyone who could satisfactorily crack the so-called Dorabella cipher. However, none of the entries received, despite their ingenuity, came up with anything like a convincing translation. It's been suggested that the cipher isn't a piece of writing at all, but instead a series of notes or part of a score. Given that Elgar composed his variations just over a year later, it's conceivable that it's a coded snatch of the very one he devoted to his friend. Elgar took his secrets with him to the grave, and left the music world with some great works and one or two enigmas that may never be solved.